when you first read this problem, it feels like this is gonna involve some dynamic programming, correct? And to be very honest, nobody actually likes dynamic programming. So the good news is that this problem can be solved efficiently just by using the greedy approach. And that's really wonderful. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we'll look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start off with the most naive way and see why a recursive solution or a dynamic programming solution is not most optimal. After that, we will find an efficient solution using the greedy approach and then also do a dry run so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we understand the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array where each element represents the maximum jump possible. And you have to determine if you can reach the last index. To understand it better, let us look at our sample test cases. In my first test case, I have an array like this, 23114. Now, what does this mean? We can see it visually. What do you see over here? You see that you have a certain staircase and you are standing at the very first position itself, right? And for every step, you can take a maximum of either two jumps or three jumps or one or one or either four jumps, correct? So this simply means that if I am at my starting position, then I can take a maximum of two jumps. So either I take a one jump and reach over here or I take two jumps and reach at the next position that is one, correct? Similarly, if I had been standing at this staircase, that is where three is written, then either you can take a jump of one or you can take a jump of two or you can take a jump of three, right? It simply means that this is the maximum jump you can make. You can obviously make smaller jumps, correct? So the problem states that if you are standing at the start position, that means right over here, is there a way that you can reach the very last step? If yes, return a true, else return a false. So for our first test case, you can see that if I'm starting at my position two, then first of all, I take a jump of just one position, correct? And now what do you see over here? Now I can take a maximum of three jumps. So what I will just do is I will stand over here and take a jump of three positions. So you see, I was able to reach my final step, correct? So for the first test case, you will return true as your answer. Similarly, let us look at our second test case. Once again, just draw a diagram so you can visualize it correctly. You are standing at this position now, correct? And once again, either you can take a jump of three positions or you can take a jump of two positions or you can take a jump of one position, correct? And now just try to visualize, no matter whatever you do, somehow you will always land on this step where you cannot take any more jumps. Think about it. If I am at the very first step, the maximum jumps I can take are three, right? That will land me right over here. If I am at step number two, then the maximum jumps I can make are two. Once again, I will land at zero. If I am at this step now, once again, I can only do one more jump. So once again, I will be at zero. Once I am at zero, what is the maximum jump I can do? I cannot do any jump from here. So there is no way that I can reach the final staircase, correct? So for this particular test case, you need to return false as your answer because there is no combination by which you can reach the very last step of this staircase, correct? So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and start off with the most naive way that you can think about. Okay, so I have a sample array in front of me. And if you try to visualize it, it will look something like this, correct? So if I'm starting at this position, then what are the possible jumps that I can make? Either I can make one jump or I can make two jumps or I can make three jumps, right? That is equivalent to you're standing over here and you either make one jump or two jumps or three jumps, right? That means if you're standing at the staircase with the value three, then you have three options to choose from. Either you do one jump or you do two jumps or you would do three jumps, correct? And then where will they land you? If you just did a one jump, then you will land at index two, correct? 
if you do two jumps, then where do you land? You land at index one. And if you do three jumps, then where do you land? You land at index zero. Now watch what we are doing over here. When you are at this step, one with the value two, that means you are standing right over here, correct? Now, how many jumps can you make? Either you make one jump or you will make two jumps, right? So it simply means that you will once again have two different scenarios. Either you make one jump or you make two jumps. If you make one jump, then you land at index one. Or if you make two jumps, then you land at index zero, correct? So what is happening over here? You are making kind of a decision tree, correct? And similarly, when you are over here at the staircase with the value one, once again, you will just have one more position to go and you can make one jump. And where will you reach? You will reach an index zero. Now, when you go through this decision tree, you realize that you cannot go anywhere from here. You cannot go anywhere from here and you cannot go anywhere from here either. Right? So these are dead ends. You just have one more situation remaining. That is when you are at position one. And even in that situation also, you will just be able to reach a zero. Correct? So this is also a dead end in fact. So once you have exhausted out all of your options, you can try to see if you were able to reach an index four at any point of time. If yes, then you can return a true. Otherwise you can return a false. So this is a kind of a recursive solution. But there is a certain problem. You see that you are computing the same case multiple number of times. Just watch over here. You have already determined that if you start from position one, then you will reach a dead end, correct? So there is actually no need to compute it again over here, right? So if you are able to store all of these rivets somewhere, for example, what you do is you create a DP array. Then for each of the indexes, you can store that, hey, can I reach my last index from this position? You determine that, okay, from the first position, I cannot reach from the second position. I cannot reach from the third position. I cannot reach and so on. Correct. But all of this, just try to visualize. This is so much work to do, right? So neither a recursive solution or a dynamic programming solution will help you out. They will both end up taking a lot of time. In fact, the brute force approach is going to take you the time complexity of order of n to power n. And the dynamic programming approach is going to take up a time complexity of order of n square. And as you remember, I told you in the beginning, this problem is not so complicated. You can easily do it via a greedy approach and that too just in a single pass. So how do you go about doing that? To start finding an optimal solution, first of all, forget everything else and start to look at the problem once again, very fresh. So let us say I have this sample array in front of me. Now, if you notice, there is a very special thing about this particular test case. This test case does not have the value zero anywhere in the hair. Correct. So what does that tell you? It simply means that let us say I'm standing over here. None of the values are zero. Correct. So for every stair, I can at least jump one step, right? So if I'm able to jump at least one step from every stair, then no matter what happens, I will always be able to reach the very last staircase. Correct? Try to think about it. No matter how large your array, if you do not have any zero anywhere, then you can at least make one step. Things begin to change when one of the values become zero. So when you reach at this position, this is where things get tricky, right? You do not have anywhere else to go. You cannot make any more jumps. So First of all, this is a very simple test case that if you do not have any zeros in the array, your answer will be true each and every time. And based upon this idea, we can come up with a greedy approach as well. To understand the greedy approach, let us take up a generic array that is larger in size and it has zeros as well. Correct? So currently, what is the scenario? You are standing over here and you have to reach the very last position, right? Now for a moment, Forget everything else. Try to think what would have happened if you were standing at the second last position instead of the very first position. Just focus on this part now. If somehow you were able to reach the second last position, what is the value over here? The value is one, right? That means with one step, you can reach the final destination, right? So 
I can safely say that if I am able to reach this second last step, then I will always reach my last step as well. Right? Just wait for a moment and try to think about it. What am I saying? You can be very, very sure that if you reach the second last step, then you will always reach the last step as well. So it can be safe to say that if I am able to make my final destination as the second last step, then I will always be able to reach my last step as well. Right? Now, based upon this idea, just keep going one step backwards at a time. I have shifted my final position, right? Now try to go back one step again. And once again, apply the same logic. If you were standing over here and you had to reach the final destination, then can you reach it? The answer is no, correct? Because from this position, you can make zero jumps, right? So right now, my final destination will remain the same because I cannot reach the final destination starting from this step. Now keep doing this one step backward. What happened if you were standing over here? Then can you reach the final destination? No, because once again, you can just make zero jumps. Just keep doing this ahead and I guarantee you it will suddenly make sense. Now move one step back. What happens at this position now? If you are standing over here, can you reach the final destination? The answer is still no, because from this position, you can make a maximum of just one jump. That means at the max, I can reach just this index, right? So once again, the answer is no. Move one step backward now. Can you reach the final index if you were standing over here? Once again, the answer is no, because at the max, you can make only two jumps and it won't reach you the final destination. Move one step backward now. This is where things get interesting. From this position, you can make a maximum of five jumps. So can you reach this final destination from this position? Either you make one jump, no. You make two jumps, no. You make three jumps, no. You make four jumps, no. Then you make five jumps. So yes, if you started at this index, then you were able to reach the final position, right? So once again, I can say the same thing. I can move my final destination right over here. Because try to think, if I am able to start from this position, then I can reach over here. And then I already know that from this position, I can reach my final index. So I will apply the same logic. If I am able to reach at this index, then I know for a fact that I will be able to reach my final index as well. So once again, keep repeating the same process. And what I'm going to do is I will move myself one step backwards. Now, can you reach the final index from this position? Yes, because you're allowed a maximum of two jumps and you can reach it just one jump itself. So once again, I will move my final position one step backwards. Move yourself one step backward. Can you reach the final index from this position? Yes, because you can make one jump. Once again, move your final index one step backward and move yourself one step backward. Can you reach the final position from this position? Yes, just by one jump. So I'm going to move my flag one step backwards once again. And this is where you stop. So now I can safely say that I will be able to reach my final position. Notice that you do not have to outline the steps how you're reaching there. You just have to tell me that, hey, are you able to reach? Yes, you can do that. One step, one step, two steps, five steps, and then the final step, right? In this problem, you do not have to outline the steps. Yes, there can be a problem in the future where you have to trace these steps as well and determine the minimum number of jumps also. That is hold together a different question. But for this question itself, the greedy approach is enough and you can see that it works in a linear time complexity. Also try to think of a scenario where you cannot reach the final step. That is very simple actually. So if you remember a few steps earlier, this was my final index, correct? And let us say one of the values over here was three. So if you remember when I was standing right over here, what was the maximum steps I could take? Earlier, I could take a maximum of five steps. That is why I could reach over here and I updated my flag, right? But this time the value is three. So I can only make a maximum of three jumps. That means I can just reach over here. So I am unable to reach my flag. So what will you do? You will keep on iterating in the backwards direction 
until you find a larger value that can actually reach the flag. What will happen is you will keep on going backwards and you realize that, hey, I cannot find a larger value. In that scenario, you are going to return false as your answer. So this is how a greedy approach looks like. And you can be very sure that this will give you an optimal solution. Now, based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have my generic array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function can jump. Now, moving on with the dry run of the code, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we determine the initial final position. That means where do you will have to reach at the very beginning? That is length minus one. That is the last position, right? So I know that I have to reach at this position currently, right? What do you do after that? You start a for loop that starts with the second last index and goes all the way up to the beginning. And with each iteration, we are just going to do index minus minus. That means we are moving one step backwards. So I start off with the second last position right over here. And then you just check, can you reach the final position just from the index where you are standing? You can reach right over here. So what you do is you update your final position with the index. That simply means that this final position now changes to this current index where you are sitting at. What will happen now? This loop will run again. And this time your pointer has been updated. Once again, this loop runs and you check, can you reach the final index from here? No. So you will go one step backwards. Can you reach from here? No. So once again, you will go one step backwards. You will keep on going back until you reach position five. You know that you can reach from over here. So you will move your final flag right over here. This way, when this loop finally completes, what will happen? If you can reach the final position, then this final position will reach the very first index, correct? If you are able to arrive over here, then yes, you can go to the final index also. So in this case, you are going to return true as your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you only do one traversal of the array and the space complexity of the solution is order of one because you do not take any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you are solving problems using a greedy approach, it is always a good idea to prove it out that this greedy approach will give you the correct solution. There are also several other problems where if you go by the greedy approach, then that solution will not be the most optimal. Check out my video on greedy approach algorithms if you want to know more about it. So while going through this video, did you face any problems? Or did you find any other better way to solve this problem? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. I would also like to remind you that if you become a member of my channel, then you do get priority reply to your comments and I will respond to them as quickly as possible. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what other problems you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.